And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is John Rolls, an entertainer with a big voice known worldwide. Join John and I tonight as we look at the journey travelled so far. We welcome John Rolls as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Welcome, John Rolls. Thank you, Jared. Good to be here. What an honour to have one of New Zealand's greatest singers. Oh, I was just down at the um, TAB and I thought I'd drop by and see you. <laughs> now, did you get a winner? <laughs> I never do. <laughs> I'm still trying. <laughs> now, John, we're both um, classic baby boomers. This is a baby boomer chat show. We've said that right from the beginning, but um, I'm 62, you're 62, I think you are. Wow, and... same age. You look younger than me, uh, oh, Jared. Do you yeah. think it's the yeah. lack of hair? Uh... Well, I don't know what it is. It's a bit like Frankie <laughs> Stevens there. <laughs> Why were you so lucky, John, to get all that hair? <laughs> of course, your fathers and uh, leave a genetic package, don't they, about yeah, they hair? Sh- my father, they sure do. <laughs> my father had a beautiful head of hair, but uh, I didn't get it. But uh, your father was a 1938 Maori All Black. Yes, he was from uh, 34 to 38. That's he was a Mario Black, yeah. He was a very good wing and three quarter, I believe, you know, told by um, a lot of people that he was one of the toughest guys on the, on the field, you know. He just bowled them right through them and scored a lot, the wing and three quarter. I would like to encourage my son. Uh, I have two sons, Dame and Blake. Now, they're only young. So I was a late starter. <laughs> uh, but everything's still working. Um, Dane is... Um, touch wood. Yeah, yeah touch wood. <laughs> uh, Dane is 10 and uh, Blake's only 6, but I was talking to Dane, my eldest boy, and I was saying, your father was a very good All Black, you know? Maori All Black. And I said, I'd like you to follow in his footsteps, you know? And he said, I, I like that, Daddy. I, I, I want to be um, uh, an All Black. So I said, you keep thinking like that, you know? Do you think uh, older men make better fathers? I mean, is this a good time uh, to be a father? Better lovers, but I don't know about <laughs> fathers. Um, I think so. Yeah, they, they do make better fathers because they, you know, they've the mellowed. Yeah. They've mellowed, and they, yeah, yeah, and they look back at their own life and all that stuff. And you try to prevent anything happening that happened to you in a wrong way. You try to prevent them, so you're overcaring. Uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But uh, I just give my boys as much love as I can. Mm. I'm always kissing them, always cuddling and kissing them. Now, was that, so that, the that makes a good father, I think. I think so too. Now, was that the same for you as you were growing up? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. There was a lot of kicking in the backside. <laughs> really? Was um, the, the old man was a pretty tough man. Mum used to sort of um, uh, save me a lot of times because I used to just beat out the music in the bedroom and he used to hate lots of noise. I used to lock the door and he'd bash that on that door and kick me out of the house, you know, while I was practicing. But as soon as he'd gone, Mum would put me straight back in, you know, uh, as a kid, because I was a music lover, a guitar player. Mm. Hank Marvin was my idol. That's right. Uh, the Shadows. Mm. And I formed my own group in Call Kawa, I Call too. the Shadows. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but no, no, I didn't really get a lot of uh, affection uh, from, from my old man. Uh, and Mum was, in those days, I mean, a, a different, different era, mm. you know, it was a different era. And they. Well, it must have been a great satisfaction about when you did finally. Uh, have such success in 1968. Mm. What did your father say to you that uh, would have justified all the kicks in the bum? He, he my father, Eddie Horhapata Rolls, he was quite a character. He, he either loved him or you hated him, but most people liked him. He was a, he was a, he was a nice, nice con man, you know, funny guy. Mm. Uh, you accepted him for what he, what he did. He used to do all these unusual things, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and get away with it. Yeah. Um, my father used to, I used to go and work at the, the mill, the Kawarau Pulp and Paper Company, the mill, as a fitter's mate when I left school. And he used to be waiting, waiting at the door to, with his hands out to, for when I used to get paid. <laughs> and I used, to, I used to have to hand my wages over because he was quite a threatening sort of a guy, intimidating guy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I'd look at him and I'd go, Dad, can I have some money for some cigarettes? Because I was, you know, having a, a bit of a puff back then, and and he he'd, he'd, he'd struggle. I had to struggle to get him get, get, get forty something. cents out of him or something, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, or to, what is it, twenty two shillings in those days. Um, but but when I actually went out in the world, and I had my success, um, 
he was he was so nice to me all the time. You know, he was, he was skiting and showing off to all of his relatives that I made this boy. You know, <laughs> it was me. No, it wasn't mum. It had nothing to do with it. He's my son. Look, look at this. Look at this. And he was showing all of the press clippings. Mm -hmm. And I did a, uh, had a contract in Las Vegas once for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I was only what twenty one, twenty two, at the Flamingo, mm. and he was just but showing off, you know. He, he, he was so proud. And um, could you have reminded him about how he treated you? And um, could you have reminded him what would his his answer have been if you'd reminded him of how bad it was when you were trying to? Um, oh, I didn't get a chance to remind him because he. He died in 1970. I just, oh, okay. I just sort of went. He just saw the tail of the. Uh, yeah, he just yeah. saw the beginning, mm. and that's when I, uh, I was just about to buy them a house uh, in Auckland here, and, and which is the house I'm living in now. I never sold it. I, that's the mm. house I bought for. Uh, just after he died, I bought Mum a house for her birthday, 1970. Uh, he never enjoyed. He never got to uh, mm. to enjoy that because he died just before. So I never really got a chance to remind him of anything like he just said. He'd gone and that was it. How important are fathers? If uh, Just to continue on that theme for a little bit longer, do you think that uh, you would have liked to have had uh, a good chat to him and um, resolve a lot of these issues, do you think, before he went? Or? I would have liked to, yeah, I would have liked to. If, um, so I just came out of school, went working in the mill, then I went, I, I took off, I went overseas. And then I actually, I was in Sydney, Australia, and I brought him over. We just went out on the town every night. So there was that, that special yeah. moment, you know, when, yeah. when we went you out to the restaurants. And, yeah. uh, but, I did, you know, when he, when he suddenly died, I never had a real chance to really sit down with him and talk to him, you know. But and, he was... And did you realise at that moment how much you missed him? The, the two, uh, yes, I did, really. When he died, I, it was very hard for me to, to accept that. Um, um, but the, me the memory goes on, and um, his favourite song was "If Only Had Time." He, and you know, um, he, I tried to sing it at his uh, funeral, but I couldn't do it. So that's that was all pretty sad. I, I wish he had lived another twenty years; it would have been great. But Did Mum, Mum stayed around for quite a while. Um, she, she died in nineteen ninety-eight. But I, I got all the time in the world. I had all the time in the world to make to fulfil her happiness. Dreams, yeah. So at least that happened. Now. You were in a hurry to get out of Cairo, obviously. Um, um, uh, yeah, what, well... What, what could have ever made you stay? I mean, imagine your life if you decided to stay in Cairo, work at the mill. What do you, who, who and what do you think you would be today? Oh, my God, I can't stand bearing the thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, Cairo is Kodo, the sleepy little town. Mm -hmm. I just left there and, uh, when I was um, 16. And I left there and I just wrote, wrote songs about it in a sleepy little town where soft breezes blow. There's a lovely little Maori miss I used to know, you know, Cheryl Moana Marie. And, uh, but um, I always loved going back for that mountain because I, I used to try to run up that Mount, Mount Edgecombe. Or they've got another name for it now, but um, I used to run up, run up there and back again, you know, come down the hill. So the memories are, you know, you, they're just uh, unbelievable memories. And I like, but had I stayed in Kawara, I, I don't, gee, I don't think they would have had any recording studios or anything. <laughs> and, that, been, and that smell is the smell of cabbage, <laughs> rotten cabbage. <laughs> you could have been a carpenter or a bricklayer or a motor mechanic. Thank or... God I was a, a singer and entertainer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, I've seen the world now. You know, with a lot of my mates back in Kawara, they're still in that same house, you know? And I run into them now and again. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've been all over the world, New York, Vegas, <laughs> England. 